the same anointing upon him may flow to us. Our minds are alert, our hearts are open to receive. We know, Lord, there's no way your word can return to you devoid of that which you command it to perform. Let it, call, let it perform in us, Lord, that we may go out and do the works of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's give an applause and a welcome hand to our dear friend and our pastor for another presentation. Thank you. Amen. Could I, could I ask you to pray for me before I start? Just to come lay hands on me and pray that the Lord would use my words. Baba wa katende ka mzita la Jesu. Amen. Mwari motunga mire na mzita la Jesu. Mzita la nyongare kuzwe. Tunokupayo rumbi zo yose. Tunosi mzira zika la nyukwa msoro soro. Kekuti mwari mwari wa kandaka. Mwana wenya haku prezenda. Urukuro ya kutita spiritually nourish. Imimi mwari karai parurimi ruwake. Uye za rura injere zake. Kutawara kupe kudenga kwa mwari mwari. Tino kukumbiri hai. Tino kurumbi zai. Tino kufari hai. Tino kupai mbiri yose mzita la jeso. Amen. Amen. Thank you my friend. Thank you. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful to have fellowship with each other? Isn't it wonderful to be able to be encouraged by the teaching and preaching of the Word of God in truth? It's wonderful to gather together here in, in this wonderful facility. Great food, great fellowship. It's really all good. It's all so good. And uh, I want to share with you something that the Lord's been doing in my life for the past couple of years. Um, as you well know, we are in spiritual warfare. Uh, I love history. I study history of, of the world, history of my country, history of Europe. Uh, I love history. And there's one common thread that seems to go everywhere you read in history, and that common thread is warfare. Major events of the world seem to be centered around warfare. World War II changed the, the look of the world. The map of the world before World War II and after World War II was totally different. And the same is true with World War I. The map of the world in 1914 and 1919, totally different because of war. Many nations began with bloodshed, with war. Many kingdoms were established by warfare. And we're a part of the kingdom of God. And Jesus told us the kingdom of God will suffer violence. Mm -hmm. We're in warfare. The warfare that we are experiencing, though, is a different kind of warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, demonic forces of evil and wickedness and darkness, with many different ways that the devil has to trick us, deceive us, to attack us. Even um, like the teaching an hour ago, how children can be impressed by a demonic influence because of the way they're born or because of some things that have happened in their family years before they were even conceived. But the devil plans ahead. The devil plans ahead. He already has a plan for your great-grandchildren, how he's going to deceive them, and he's going to draw them away. You will spend your life teaching others and people in your family about Jesus. You will raise your children in a Christian home. You will see to it that your grandchildren receive Christian instruction and will know Jesus. But the devil has a plan that after you've gone to be with Jesus, he has a plan to mess up your family. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share with you something that happened to me back in the summer of 2011, going on three years ago. I was in Belfast in Northern Ireland. 
And I felt impressed of the Lord. I was walking through an area called the Shankle. The Shankle in Northern Ireland is the most depressed area of the nation. You know, governments have statistics on crime, unemployment, literacy, ability to read and write, uh, suicide, education, how many people left school, what their grade level is when they left school. All these statistics and the Shankle ranks in the most need of any area in all of Northern Ireland. The Shankle's the worst place to live. <clears throat> and that's where I lived to do ministry. And I was walking down, up and down the Shankle one day and the Lord impressed upon me that he wanted his word proclaimed in the Shankle. Specifically, he wanted a Bible reading marathon in the Shankle. And I would walk up and down the streets of the Shankle praying, and there was this one church, it was a Presbyterian church called West Kirk. And a lot of churches in England look like fortresses big, huge rocks, stones. You have an Episcopal church, I think, in Harare. It's a cathedral. And, you know, it's big, big rocks, heavy. Now, what they have, they have the doors on many of those churches are big, thick, wooden doors, and they're clanged shut. Mm. You walk around the church today, where do you get in? All the doors are shut. In fact, in Northern Ireland, there's cast iron fence all around the building. You can't even get to the door. Some of the churches in Belfast, they would have their service at, say, 10 o'clock. At 9.30, they would open the gates of these cast iron fence. They'd open the gates at 9 o'clock. At 9.15, they'd lock them back up with the people inside to worship. And then when they left, they'd open them up, people would leave, they'd lock them right away. Jesus Christ. Huh. What message does that tell the people that are living in the shankle? We don't want you. It's a fortress. We're keeping you out. The West Kirk Church, though, had... Now, the door was locked, but it was a regular door like this door, this door. And the door, though, the, next to the door were panes of glass. And you could see inside the foyer of the church. You couldn't see into the sanctuary because that was around the other side. But, but you could see inside. And it was glass. And as I walked by there, I could picture that door open. And a podium there at the door. And people reading the Bible. People reading the Bible. And as I began to pray, and I, then I started talking to people about the idea of having a Bible reading marathon. And we did. To make a long story short, we started at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning in June. It was the longest day of the year. The sun did not go down till about 11 o'clock at night. At 3 o'clock in the morning, the sun came back up. Much light. And I signed people up. I went around to other churches. I went to everybody I knew. And I had a, a book. Where's my book? Don't have it with me. Anyway, I had a little book. And I had every 15 minutes a place where people could sign up. And I got their name and their telephone number. And I called people, and folks would say, "Can I can come on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And I'd look, oh, yes, and so I'd write it down. Somebody else would say, I can come on Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening at 8. And I'd look, I'd go, no, somebody's got that. Can you come at 7? Yes, okay, we got that. I would go to churches, and churches would take a block of four hours. And people would come down from the church, and they would rotate the people reading the Bible. And when one person was reading the Bible, the other seven were on the street talking to people because folks would walk by, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
people would drive by and they'd come up, what are you doing? We're reading the Bible. Oh, can I read? And, and when we started, there were lots of empty places in my book. I mean, I was prepared to stand there for three or four hours and read it myself. But somebody, I mean, there's a few people with me, and somebody come in and say, can I read? And they go, well, I said, if you'll come back in a half hour, you can read. Good, I will. And after they finished, they said, that was so much, that was so much fun. It was so exhilarating. Can I come back tomorrow? Yes, you can come back. And so they came back and, you know, they would read. Then they would fellowship and go back and read again and, and then go home. Uh, before the week was over, 120 people read the Bible. We even had a couple of people from Germany that read it in German. Do y'all you know what Skype is? Some of you have Skype? Yes. I had a friend from the States that was going to read on Skype. We were going to set up the laptop on the podium, and he was going to read from the States on Skype. The problem is the church didn't have Internet, <laughs> so he couldn't do it. But that was the plan. We had, I told people to bring your Bible, the Bible you're most comfortable with. Some people had these Kindles. Is that what it is? I don't know. But they had a machine, you know, they had the, their computer thing, and, and they, they're big like that, you know. And they would read, and for 15 minutes, they would read and then finish, and the next person would take over. 120 people read. There were 40 congregations represented. There were 20 clergy that read. Roman Catholic priests would read. Pentecostal preachers would read. Methodist, Presbyterian preachers would read. Greek Orthodox would read. There were people from Londonderry that read. People from, from uh, Bangor who read. People from Whitehead. I mean, you don't know these cities, but they're all around Northern Ireland. People who came because I either told them about it or they were visiting and heard about it and came. There was a representative to the European Union, an elected official, who came and read. And it was a glorious time. As we were reading, like I said, we were reading the Bible. One person would be at their podium and we'd read the Bible. Starting at Genesis, went all the way through to Revelation. And uh, we had other people around. To People would come up. What are you doing? We would talk to them. Seven people gave their life to Jesus while we were reading the Word. Yes. The Word does not return void. Mm -hmm. Now, two things happened that really grabbed my attention while we were doing this. Two things happened. First, I took a break, went a couple of streets down to a fish and chip restaurant. A chippy is what they call them. You know, fish, chips, vinegar on the chips, you know, mushy peas. And I'm sitting in this little restaurant. It had three tables in this restaurant. I'm in the one table. And the people next to me in the next table were talking. I could tell by listening to them they were not Christians, you know. <laughs> the words they used were not words that would glorify the Lord. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, I need to tell you this. The night before, in East Belfast, there was a riot. There were shots fired. Some people were wounded by bullets. Nobody was killed. But there was a riot. And Northern Ireland has a lot of terrorist activity. Northern Ireland has a lot of tension, uh, cross-community tension. I don't need to go into the details of that. But it's still a very sensitive place to live and very high emotions on the part of a lot of people. Since 1970, there have been uh, several hundred people killed by the cross-community violence and bombings and shootings and things that are bad that have happened. Okay, there was a riot in East Belfast. In the past, when there's been a problem in any other part of the city, the violence erupts in the Shankle. Remember, it's a low, needy area. Uh, great unemployment, great need for, I mean, just, just it's, I can't describe easily how needy that place is, how, how uh, 
sad it is how they lack many resources and many many people when they're unemployed all they do is they gamble they drink and they plan to kill somebody on the other side of the fence so there's a riot on the other side of town and these two men are talking and like I said you know that they're not Christians by the way they're using their language and one of them says, you know, there was a riot on the other side of town last night. Yeah. But there was no problems here in the Shankle. Yeah. You know why there wasn't problems in the Shankle last night? No. Why? How come we didn't have a riot here? How come there wasn't people throwing rocks at the police here? Because there's a group of people around the corner reading the Bible. Mm. <laughs> and as long as they're reading the Bible, God's not going to let anything happen to the shankle. Mm. 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 Praise God. I said, whoa. I, mean, they didn't, I didn't know them. They didn't know me. They're behind me. I'm just listening. I go, whoa. Even people that do not know Jesus. They can confess. They know the power yes. Yes. of the word of God. Jesus. Mm. Like my brother prayed, the word of God does not return void. Something else happened. There was a congregation that met in a school. They, they used a school building for their worship on Sunday morning. They didn't have their own building to worship in. I went to that, that congregation two weeks before, spoke to them on their Sunday morning, and invited them to participate in the Bible Marathon. Now, in order to, you, you think they're at the school, right? So I walk up to the school and just go in the front door and, and, and go to where they're worshiping. No. The first, you go up to the front of the school and there's bars across, you know, and it's locked and you can't get in. But what do you do? You have to go around behind the school. And you have to go down another side street and down an alley and turn here and go around and come back this way. And then you get to the back of the school building. And there's a wee gate. You have to go through the gate. And you have to then go around and go into the building. And when you go in the building, you have to go down a long hallway. And you go downstairs. And you go this way and this way, up some steps. This way, up another set of steps, go this way, and you find a wee room, and here the people are. I mean, I had to look for them. I couldn't just walk, you know, I just, it was hard. I go, why don't you put up some signs? As well, people, you know, we invite them and we bring them, and they keep somebody there at the door and all that. Well, but it was not easy to find them. The Monday after our Bible reading marathon, the pastor calls me. He's so excited. He said, the Holy Spirit is moving in the shankle. I said, what happened? He said, a young lady about 23 or 24 years old just wandered into their service. She wasn't looking for a church. She wasn't looking to worship. She did not know Jesus. She just wandered in mm. because the Lord was directing her path. And she heard the good news of Jesus Christ. She heard about the lordship of Jesus Christ. She heard how Jesus could, could make her whole and give her promise and hope in life. And she gave her life to Jesus right there in their worship service. He said, praise God. The Holy Spirit's moving in the shankle because we read the Bible last week. We proclaimed the Bible. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, a couple of other things you need to know about the Bible reading marathon. Uh, there was a woman who was scheduled to read the Bible at a particular time of day. And her, she came and she was reading. And her daughter, grown daughter, said, I wanted to go on the... She went to the other side of the street. She wanted to listen to her mother read the Word of God. Now, we had a small amplifier and speaker you know had a microphone small we didn't want to blare anything too big because people might think it was political and that would cause a problem you know how it can be so 
So anyway, this woman's across the street. There's trucks going up and down the road and cars going up and down the road and buses going up and down the road. There are people walking up and down the footpaths, you know, going in and out of the stores, talking to the fruit merchants that are outside, you know, and, and people talking and pushing their babies' carriers and, and strollers and, and talking. And she was sitting there across the street and she could see her mother. She couldn't hear her. And she 